Tottenham Hotspur have given us some unforgettable moments. From yesteryear to the modern day, Tottenham's greatest games have seen reputations forged and footballing history made. This game in 1981 went into the history books. The first FA Cup final replay to be played at Wembley Stadium. A 1-1 draw five days earlier, courtesy of a goal for each team from Tommy Hutchison, led to 92,000 fans returning to the famous Twin Towers for what would become one of the best ever finals. 23 of the 24 players returned for the match too. Only City's substitute was different, Dennis Stewart replacing Tony Henry. Spurs skipper Steve Perryman began his career as an apprentice with the club just after the previous Spurs Cup win. He was making his 599th appearance, but could he lift the cup to make it six wins out of six in the finals for Spurs? Glenn Hoddle had scored in the last four matches against City. Paul Power had scored in every round before Saturday's final. So hoping for a few goals at Wembley, Peter Brackley. So referee Keith Hackett gets us underway, the first FA Cup final replay to be staged at Wembley after Saturday's 1-1 draw when the teams met here for the first time. Will John Bonsai go one better or will Tottenham be crowing come the final whistle? Here's Ricky Villa, subbed off in the first game. Here's Villa again now. Is possessed though by Gao. So competitive in the midfield for Manchester City. Archibald. Then to Crooks. Archibald again. It was Caton in the way. And at the end, Archibald settling for the throw, which Tony Galvin will take. As Pete Birkinshaw's team strive for the lead here. Ardiles, glorious skill too from the Argentine. Still Aussie Ardiles. Then to Archibald. Oh, Corrigan up with a save, but it's Villa. Well, from Valenta Hero. He didn't finish the game on Saturday and feared he might not be chosen tonight. Keith Birkenshaw kept faith with him and he has responded with a goal. And it was made in Argentina. Aussie Ardiles with a great little run there. Corrigan was really brave against Archibald but it fell kindly for Villa, who had time to steady himself before planting it home. Tottenham in front, Ricky Villa. But it owes so much to his Argentine compatriot, Ozzy Ardiles. Hutchison, wanting Keith Hackett to allow the advantage there. He was certainly impeded by Ardiles. So it's free kick. And it was the target up front, out by Miller. Now McKenzie, oh, what a strike! It's 1-1, Steve McKenzie. With a magnificent goal, City back on level terms. And in spectacular fashion too, from McKenzie. On the volley, it simply flew in past Emilio Alexic. Just look at the power in this. Perfect timing from McKenzie. A goal to save her. Kevin Reeves just dropping off. In goes Bennett now, who's got plenty of pace. Oh, was he brought down then by Miller? Yes, it's a penalty. It was an untidy challenge from the Tottenham defender. Down went David Bennett. And Keith Hackett instantly pointed to the spot. Little nudge on here by Reeves. David Bennett was waiting to pounce. And Miller never really looked in control of that situation. Hewton on the scene as well, and between them they brought him down. It's Kevin Reeves for City, it's 2-1! Alexic went the right way, but couldn't keep it out. To the chagrin of Paul Miller. 
the man who brought down Bennett for the penalty kick. And it was a really accurate one too, it needed to be, from Kevin Reeves. City fans for it now, the team in front. Our dealers. Archibald, and now Tony Galvin. Hutchison back in defensive mode. Here's Garth Crooks. Now Ardiles. He's got Hoddle in support. Still Hoddle. And Corrigan was good enough to get his fingertips to it. The rustic drive in from Hoddle. It's a glorious skill on the ball. Look at his footwork here. This is Hoddle at his very best. But no equaliser. Frustration for Keith Birkenshaw. Via. Archibald's after this one, it was Coton to head it clear. Now McDonald, under pressure too from Garth Crooks. City having to backpedal. Tottenham sensing that something might be on for them here. Here's Crooks, and he's won the corner off McDonald. It's a good spell this for Tottenham. Can they yet pull it round? Been a thrilling night so far. Hoddle with the corner. Oh, off Caton then. Maybe it struck his arm. Tony Galvin. Well, Corrigan seemed to lose the flight of the ball. Did it roll off the arm of Tommy Caton? We'll see here from Hoddle's long corner kick. That did seem to be the case. Via Hoddle. Oh, it's a lovely ball for Archibald. And Nick Crooks! It's 2-2! City floundering at the back, and they have been punished by Garth Crooks. Hoddle was the architect here. He had time to look up, defenders streaming forward, there was no offside. And as Corrigan came out, Crooks was able to guide it in. Such awareness from him. Tackle to win possession back for Tottenham. Now it's Galvin. The game has really opened up now. Played it for Ricky Villa. On you go, says Crooks. And he's doing just that. Still Villa. Oh, what a run! What a goal! Fantastic! Ricky Villa! Well, who would have thought it? He thought he might not even be playing tonight. He scored twice, and this has to be one of the great goals of FA Cup Finals. An entrancing run from the Argentine, no one can stop him. And Tottenham from being 2-1 down, now lead 3-2. Magnificent individual goal from Villa. Hutchison. No free kick, Archibald then to Hoddle. Great pass too, it's Crooks, he can settle it here. Excellent goalkeeping though by Joe Corrigan to keep City in this final. John Bond can only hope now that they can find something here, right at the last, to save it. Paul Power. Right off to Chuarts. Just the wrong side of the post from substitute Kenneth Stewart. Goodness me, what relief then for the Tottenham bench. That's how close it was. Run by Ardias. Archibald, you know where he's going. But that's it. Tottenham have won the cup. Ricky Villa is the hero. Keith Birkenshaw has seen his team triumph in a pulsating cup final replay. Garth Crooks on the score sheet as well. Ardiles, masterful and majestic in midfield. And a truly sensational winner from his Argentine compatriot, Ricardo Villa. So, such a proud moment here then for Steve Perriman. A Tottenham man from his apprentice days, his one and only club. This was his 599th game for them.
and he will hold aloft the trophy to celebrate this enthralling and in the end deserved cup final triumph. Tottenham 3, Manchester City 2. The FA Cup sixth round draw set up an all London affair at Stamford Bridge in 1982. Chelsea's Mickey Droy failed a late fitness test, so Gary Chivers played at centre half. Alan Mays replaced the suspended Colin Lee. Steve Archibald passed a late test for Spurs as they fielded the same side that had beaten Eintracht Frankfurt in the Cup Winners' Cup the previous week. Two contrasting keepers on show here. Steve Francis, still an apprentice at Chelsea. Ray Clements would appear at Wembley the following week for the 37th time. John Helm was watching. Rather unusually, it's Tottenham Hotspur in all white. Apparently, referee George Courtney took exception to both sides wearing blue shorts. Hence Tottenham in the all-white. They look more like Real Madrid, apart from the yellow socks. Garth Crooks on the ball. Berryman will angle it back in here. Chance still for Tottenham. Has it in there. But Chelsea, scruffily maybe, but they don't care. Managed to get that ball to safety. Mickey has it at the heart of it all. Archibald. Two Tottenham players here together, but it will be Ardelis who will continue the runner on along the line of the Chelsea 18-yard area. And then the breakout led by Clive Walker. Always walks the ball on that favoured left foot, and what, how well he's done here, Walker. Well, it was a dangerous and a probing run. Out of around 45,000 here, all expectant. And a good ball over the top, and Archibald might yet get in here, and it's prodded into the side netting. Steve Archibald, a menace here inside the area. There were three Chelsea defenders around him. This may be where they missed the presence of Mickey Droy. Walker tries to arrest the initiative, and George Courtney says free kick Chelsea. Some harrowing moments for the Tottenham defence, provided at the moment mostly by Walker. And he'll be one of those around this free kick, Ray Clements, dancing up and down the line. And it's hammered through, and hammered in, and Chelsea lead! Brilliantly struck here by Fillory. Clements beaten all ends up. Nicely done by Chris Hutchings getting it across there to prevent Archibald making inroads. Well, the Stamford Bridge faithful with something to cheer here. And it's a great London occasion and it's going Chelsea's way at the moment thanks to Mike Fillery's left foot. Hazard with the ball up there. Chelsea have been equal to most things so far. Hewton this time. Looking for a return ball from Crooks, maybe. It does come to him eventually from Ardelis. No, it's Galvin first of all, the cross by him. Met by Hutchings. Ardelis once again. Crooks again. Shout for a handball. And referee Courtney right on the spot agrees. He couldn't have been closer to see Nutton's handling offence. Great opportunity, and young Francis there. Well, he's got a bit to say at the moment, and it may well be a Glenn Hoddle special. Ardelis, Hoddle it is. Well, Francis makes the stop, but following in was Steve Archibald. Spurs level, sympathy for Francis. He gets down well here to deny Hoddle a goal, but can't cling on, and the ace puncher is there. 1-1 one, one it is. Archibald involved in most things now, as is Ardelis. Such a well-balanced player, the Argentinian, and down he goes here. He lost his balance, but only because of the challenge of nothing. It's on a knife edge at the moment. Glenn Hoddle will try and turn it Tottenham's way with the ball in here, and 
Good. Francis was sort of moving gingerly across his line when the header from Miller flicked off the top of the bar. Look at Francis, full of trepidation. There's Miller's ball, and it's just off the angle. Galvin, Ken Hewton will support enthusiastically. Seeking to supplement the attack, Chris Hewton. Archibald, clever little back flick from him. As it keeps the move going, Hoddle's shot, Hoddle's goal. Typical Glenn Hoddle, driven into the net beyond Francis with such precision and such power too. It was the lovely touch here from Hazard that opened it and Hoddle belted the ball wide of the keeper. Archibald the flick, Hazard the pass, Hoddle the finish. And how emphatic was this? Super strike. Tottenham having come from behind, don't want to let go now, and Galvin will drive them to the edge of that Chelsea area. Crooks. Maybe another one here. Oh, what a save from Steve Francis. Chris Hewton cannot believe it, I don't think. The ball arrowing into the top of the Chelsea net until Francis stretched. He may look anxious, Keith Birkinshaw, but he'll be delighted with the way Tottenham are carrying the game to the opposition right now. After taking the lead, Chelsea have been second best, and here is Hoddle again. May look for one of those floating shots, he may find Hazard instead. That might well be good enough for Tottenham Hotspur. They are surely on their way into the semi-finals now. The killer blow struck by Mickey Hazard, teed up as he was by Hoddle. 3-1 it is for Spurs, they are on their way. Fillery. Seems a long time ago now since Fillery struck that free kick so venomously into the Spurs net. And this is Fillery again, and there's a bit of mayhem in here now. There's a big shout for a handball, doesn't matter, because Alan Mays has cracked a goal for Chelsea. And they are back in the hunt. Chelsea 2, Spurs 3... And while some Chelsea players were protesting and shouting for a handball, there, the ball had come off Price, Alan Mays didn't hang around. Miller will hit the ball long and Tottenham will begin their celebrations. Disappointment again for Chelsea. But Keith Birkinshaw's Tottenham Hotspur have prevailed here. Another excellent performance having come from behind with Glenn Hoddle, instrumental. 1991 saw a semi-final played at Wembley for the first time ever. The North London derby against Arsenal was watched in over 30 countries worldwide. Spurs were grateful to have the man of the moment, Paul Gascoigne, back after a stomach operation. David Howells was fit enough to play after managing 90 minutes in midweek after a 10-game absence. Title-chasing George Graham stuck with Tony Adams and Steve Bold in the Arsenal defence. David O'Leary was left sitting on the bench. And the commentator, Tony Gubba. So Tottenham kick off Wembley Stadium's first ever FA Cup semi-final in front of a crowd of just under 78,000. And my goodness, the difference in form of these two teams coming into this important match couldn't be more pronounced. Arsenal have beaten in the last nine league games. Spurs with just one win in their last nine. George Graham, of course, chasing the double with Arsenal. Here's Edinburgh for Tottenham, galloping down that flank. Chance here, perhaps. Gascoigne gets away from his marker. Gascoigne! Well, a good, positive start from Tottenham and from Paul Gascoigne. Just five weeks after he underwent a stomach operation. Well, Tottenham's number eight, he's, he's really wound up for this. Oh, Limpar was a little bit late with that challenge. It's going to be a free kick to Tottenham. Maybe 35 metres from goal, surely too far for anybody to think of beating the England international David Seaman in that Arsenal goal.
But the way Paul Gascoigne's backed away from this, well, he might be going to have a go, he is. Oh, Gascoigne! Only he could do it. Four minutes done in the FA Cup semi-final. And Paul Gascoigne with a moment of magic, applauded there by his manager, Terry Venables. Just look at how much power he got on that. And even David Seaman getting a touch to it, couldn't keep it out. What a start for Tottenham. That is a fantastic strike. Well, there's been talk of takeovers and Lazio maybe buying Spurs, £18 million in debt. But this semi-final couldn't have started better for them. They've really got a grip of Arsenal in these opening moments. Terry Venables choosing to play with five across midfield and really leave Lineker forward as a, a lone striker, but there's, there's lots of support arriving from midfield, and here comes Tottenham again, they're in here, Allen crosses, it comes off Smith, oh, and it's in, Lineker! Gary Lineker poaching in the six-yard box, has put Tottenham two up in ten minutes. Well, no wonder Terry Venables looks restless on the bench there. It was lovely play, Gascoigne with a touch as well, Alan who knocked it in, and then it came off a succession of players, and the last one of them was Alan Smith, back to try and help his defence. And Gary Lineker, that's where he's at his most deadly. And George Graham and the Arsenal bench look shell-shocked. Bold knocks it forward. Arsenal just trying to get a, a foothold in the game at the moment. Winterburn gets in a cross chance here. Well, it's the sort of chance that we're accustomed to seeing Alan Smith took away with great authority. Maybe the ball just a little bit behind him. Well, Tottenham's route to the semi-final has been a fairly easy one. Defeating Blackpool, Oxford, Portsmouth and Notts County. This is their first serious examination. And they're leading 2-0. Knocked in by Dixon. Smith with the header! They're back in it! Right on the stroke of half-time. And Alan Smith having missed maybe an easier chance a few moments ago. With a very authoritative header. Out jumping Gary Mabbott and beyond the despairing dive of Thorsved. Well, George Graham and Terry Venables, the rival managers today, are good friends away from football. And they'll have a, a lot to talk about after this semi final. Arsenal are definitely back in it. 2 1 at half time. And they're pressing here at the start of the second half. Oh, was a chance here, maybe! Winterburn, left foot! He is dangerous when he gets forward down that left flank. Defenders just don't pick him up. Little header to take it away from the defender, and then with the outside of the boot. And here's Allen running into space, looks to see where Lineker is. Lineker! Just the glancing header, didn't get a firm enough connection. Well, Tottenham are looking potent all over the park. Mm, Tottenham a little bit casual there, laid back by Kevin Campbell, but a good strong challenge. Here's Mabbott. Lineker. Trying to make room for a shot, still Gary Lineker! Oh, he scored! That is a classic goal from Gary Lineker. And maybe David Seaman will feel that he should have done better. He seemed to get his hands to it and he went right through them. But Lineker running from the centre circle always had Arsenal's back four backpedalling. Adams couldn't get in a challenge, he just skipped round him. Bowl couldn't get across. And then David Seaman, well, you have to say that Seaman should have saved it. 
Finally in off the post, and Tottenham restore their two-goal advantage, now leading by three goals to one. There's Merson in early. Smith! Oh, good save by Thorsmith. That's going to be a free kick. Vinny Samway is challenging back on Winterburn. And Thorsmith organising the wall. And David Seaman reflecting on the last goal. Kevin Campbell standing at the end of that four-man Tottenham wall. And this is chipped up for Alan Smith arriving! And he got it into the danger area, but Thorsved's handling today has been top draw. Smith, the last man. Might have been a deflection as well. Well, what can George Graham do? He's already replaced Limpar with Groves. And Terry Venables has replaced Paul Gascoigne with Naeem. Just as agitated on the bench as he was on the pitch. Tottenham have got to deal with these. If Arsenal get a, a goal back, it will set up a fantastic finish here. Chance! Oh! He's hit the crossbar, Campbell! And then the follow-up shot from Merson is wide. And was that Arsenal's opportunity? They've really pressurised this Tottenham defence in the last few minutes, and Campbell making a clear side of goal. Winterburn into Groves. Spreads it wide, there's two over there for Arsenal. Well dealt with, though, by Edinburgh. Anywhere will do for Tottenham at the moment. That's in by Merson, out by Gary Mabbott. And surely it's all over now in Arsenal's dream for the double. We're into the last few seconds, and there it is. Gary Mabbott has captain Tottenham to victory. They reach the FA Cup final for the ninth time and will seek a record eight. FA Cup success, Arsenal, well, they'll still chase the league title and they've got to face Manchester City in midweek. May the 18th, 1991, and Tottenham Hotspur's last game at Wembley Stadium. The ninth final for Spurs and aiming here for an eighth win, while Nottingham Forest were going for their third, led by the legendary Brian Clough. After disposing of Arsenal in the semi-final, and with the year ending in a one, Spurs fans believed they'd already got one hand on the cup. Gary Charles replaced Brian Laws in the Forest defence. Youngster Lee Glover supported Brian Clough's son Nigel up front. Nigel Jemson surprisingly dropped from the squad altogether. Gary Lineker and Paul Gascoigne had nine goals between them in the campaign so far. They lined up in the same side that had beaten Arsenal in the semi-final. Justin Edinburgh, the youngest man on the field for Spurs, He'd only made his league debut five months previously. And 19-year-old Roy Keane was the youngest player on either side, enjoying his first season at Forest. John Helm was there for us. Well, beautiful conditions for the FA Cup final. A real carpet of a surface for Tottenham Hotspur and Nottingham Forest to enjoy today. And will this be the moment for Brian Clough to win his first FA Cup at the 34th attempt? It's the one thing really missing from his mantelpiece, but then Terry Venables there will try to deny him it. Gary Charles in the side in place of Brian Laws for Forrest today. And with a bit of work here to do in containing Gascoigne. Gascoigne and a corner for Tottenham Hotspur. So, early work for the Forest defenders, Des Walker, Steve Chettle and Charles. Tottenham looking for their big guns up there, and there's a spot on header by Sedgley. Still a ball around, and it is Sedgley who then gets booped to ball as well. Decent header from Sedgley, though. Lineker looking to pounce on anything that might have been left. This is Gary Parker. Glover, decent ball from Glover. Oh, and Charles goes down, a really reckless challenge from Gascoigne. And Charles could have been seriously hurt there. Poor Gascoigne hurt himself in the process too, but how he lunged in on Gary Charles. Well, Roger Milford wearing a smile at the moment. I doubt the two players are. 
A free kick awarded here for Nottingham Forest will give her Stuart Pearce a chance. And Terry Venables a worry. Everybody knows how hard Pearce hits a ball, and it will be Stuart Pearce, and that's a hard hit. Unstoppable. Forest lead. The manager shows no emotion, but just about everybody in the 80,000 crowd does. No goalkeeper on earth would have kept that one out. From the boot, the hammer boot of Stuart Pearce. Forest in front. Well, Gascoigne's got another problem. He has been struggling, and I think that Terry Venables has already taken the decision to take off his talisman. Gascoigne with six goals in the FA Cup. But he's going to play no further part in this cup final, and he seems to have been playing like a man possessed. But the Tottenham fans rise to Gazza. Sadly, he will not illuminate this FA Cup final. Glover packing to try and win the ball here. But it's hit long. Lineker, round the edge of that Forest penalty area, will try and feed it through. by plenty forward here. It's a pass from Samways. The move will continue here. And Tottenham Hotspur, and who else? Gary Lineker, no. The flag raised. Well, it was typical Lineker, wasn't it? He will think he was just onside, and from there, he certainly looked as though he was. Paul Walsh, ready for action, if Tottenham Hotspur need him. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. They've got a good move going here, and this is Paul Stewart, and Paul Stewart scores, and Tottenham Hotspur are back all square again. The FA Cup final comes alive with a goal from Paul Stewart, who got their cup campaign off and running when they beat Blackpool in the third round. It was Naim who lifted the ball across there. But this is where the Forest defence just seemed to melt away, and when the ball was slipped to him, Stewart didn't mess around and crashed it wide of Crossley's right hand, and Tottenham Hotspur are level in the FA Cup final. Plenty of support for the Spurs, plenty of support from uh, Forest fans as well. And it's uh, Tottenham who are romping forward here, but Steve Chettle across. One of those sort of unsung defenders, Steve Chettle, but does a sound enough job. Walsh is on, and this one is screwed out by Walker. Mallet is up, Sedgley is up. Howells is up as well. Can Tottenham find a winning goal here? No. A terrific save from Crossley. He leapt across there to claw that ball away. And it was Howells, one of those who had advanced. And that is it. We are going to have extra time here in the FA Cup final. Yet again. The eighth time in 11 years that we've had extra time in cup finals. And who will be the fittest? Who will be the strongest in these extra 30 minutes? Pierce, who funded in that opening goal for Forrest. Allen. And Pierce can only give him the ball back again. What little the managers can do now. But it is Tottenham who are looking here. Oh, and a back-bending stop for Crossley. I'm not sure if he got a touch on that or whether the ball came back off the crossbar from Paul Walsh. Whatever else, Crossley certainly hurt himself. There was Walsh going in for the header, and I don't think Crossley even gets a touch, and that's unlucky for Walsh. In it goes there now. Des Walker has put the ball into his own goal. What drama here. Although Lineker is jubilant and celebrating, it's the disconsolate Walker who will be named the scorer of the goal. Terry Venables takes his seat, a puff on the cheeks. Lineker is leading the applause, but there will be some sympathy surely for Des Walker, the England centre-half, who never ever scores a goal but who has got one in the FA Cup final against his own team.
Well, a desperate moment for Walker, desperate moments for Clough and company. Archie Gemmell there, Ronnie Fenton. They've worked so hard and long to try and win an FA Cup final. Tottenham may be on their way to an eighth success in the greatest competition of all. Their intent now is to keep the ball, but then it is lost. Laws. No way through for the moment. Ooh, and then the ball is uh, handed back by Naeem. And Tottenham are within seconds of their victory. They have won the FA Cup for the eighth time. And the sad look on the face of Brian Clough tells you he is forlorn. Nobody is more forlorn, though, than Des Walker, whose headed own goal has handed Tottenham Hotspur the FA Cup. Forrest having led at one stage and Spurs having missed a penalty kick. So Gary Mabbott will receive the FA Cup. It belongs once again for the eighth time to Tottenham Hotspur. This fifth round replay in 1995 is one of the most memorable cup ties in the whole history of the competition. Spurs had lost their last three games. The Saints had drawn nine of their previous 12 games in the Premiership, so a tight game looked on the cards. A goal from Jurgen Klinsmann and a penalty by Matt Letizier provided a 1-1 draw ten days earlier at White Hart Lane. Bruce Grobelar returned from Zimbabwe for this one. With Richard Hall suspended, Jason Dodd played alongside Ken Moncow. Sol Campbell and George Popescu were both injured for Spurs, so Dean Austin and Stuart Nethercott stepped into the starting lineup. Both sides knew that Liverpool awaited the victors in the next round. Tony Gubber was there too. So it's Tottenham in their change strip who will kick off, attacking the goal to the right, and Darren Anderton with a very cheeky early attempt there to beat Bruce Grubble up. It was, of course, a Matthew Letizier penalty in the first match, which forced the 1-1 draw and tonight's replay. And having got them back to the Dell, and Southampton make home advantage count. There are 15,000 people crammed into this tight little ground. Here's Heaney. And that will be a shot and throw. Well, Tottenham were leading in the first game through Jurgen Klinsmann's goal before Letizier did what he does best from the penalty spot and scored. Magilton spreading it wide to Jason Dodd. Schipperle! Oh, what a start for Southampton! Only six minutes gone at the Dell and they lead by one goal to nil and it's Neil Schipperle. The ball driven in by Jason Dodd. And Shipley getting to it first. Well, no doubt Tottenham have been weakened by the absentees. Sol Campbell out with a hamstring, George Popescu out with a, a knee injury. Chance hit off a Bombay! Good save by Grobelar. Well, Nicky Bombay sprinting in there. Chance to get Tottenham back on level terms with only 12 minutes gone good save from the Zimbabwean international Magilton Dodd good deep cross oh. headed out from under his own crossbar there by Austin Tottenham are under pressure here Letizia with the corner Time it's headed over the bar by Nethercott. He's been given the specific job tonight of keeping Matthew Letizia quiet. And Letizia with the corner. Walker under pressure. Here's Dodd! Oh, he's in the post! It's going to be another corner. And Southampton might have been two up. Well, Walker was under intense pressure there from Moncow. But when the ball came out to Jason Dodd, who doesn't score many goals, Walker responded with, well, an excellent save to push it onto the post. 
Pause for thought for Jerry Francis, the managerial replacement for Ozzy Ardiles at White Hart Lane. This is Heaney galloping down that left flank. Goes in between two, still Heaney. Oh, and he stripped. Austin was the culprit, and it's going to be a penalty. Terrific pace, and that's what defenders don't like to have to deal with. Austin was all over the back of him. And now it will be Matthew Letissier to score his 35th penalty out of the last 36, but it was close. Walker got both hands on it, but he couldn't keep it out. And an incredible goal-scoring record from the penalty spot continues. Alan Ball there in the flat cap, the Southampton manager, must be really pleased with what he's seen. Rosenthal! Oh, that came from nothing. And it's the Tottenham substitute, Ronnie Rosenthal. A good early ball in by Nicky Barnby. And Rosenthal just swept that over the head of Bruce Grobelar. Well, that's certainly given Tottenham a lift. Here's Rosenthal, the goal scorer. and two strikes in the space of two minutes have put Tottenham back on level terms and he must surely have caught Grobelar by surprise he just drifted in and thought well he'll chance his arm from 30 yards and now the Tottenham fans have found their voices here's the Tissier Shoots from distance, oh, and stinging the hands of Walker. Well, how it's changed for Alan Ball, Southampton. 2-0 up at half-time, and now facing extra time. There it is, it's 2-2 after 90 minutes. Two goals from Ronnie Rosenthal, the substitute. And still, Liverpool don't know who they'll play in the next round. Well, they came in expectation of entertainment, and they're certainly getting it. Rosenthal. Can he work the magic again? Oh, he can! Unbelievable! It's three goals for Ronnie Rosenthal, the substitute, and Bruce Grobelar, but he didn't seem to make any attempt to go for it. Maybe he thought it was going wide, in fact, he took his hands away. Well, Bruce returned from Zimbabwe, especially for this match. Maybe he wishes that he hadn't. And into this second period now of extra time, and Tottenham are flying. Here's Anderton. Sheringham. There's a handball by Rosenthal, it will be a free kick. What an extraordinary night for Ronnie Rosenthal. Began the night on the bench. Came on as a substitute and has turned the match single-handedly. Benali with the free kick. Shipley with the header. Oh, Moncow didn't deal with that. There's a defending here for Benali to do, but he's lost out to Klinsman. He just chips it in for Sheringham. Surely this is number four. Sheringham left with the easiest of tasks. Jürgen Klinsmann just sliding him in. Grobelar committed himself. And Sheringham tucks it away for Tottenham Sport. Well, how the night has changed for Southampton. 2-0 up. And now looking at oh, looking at conceding a fifth goal, maybe. Barmby goes round Grobelar, and that's number five. And at the moment, it's like taking sweets off children. Southampton's defence has just crumbled. Well, Jerry Francis said that this was Tottenham's biggest game of the season. 
moving into the sixth round of the FA Cup on a season in which initially they weren't allowed to compete because of financial irregularities, but that FA ban was rescinded under pressure from Tottenham. And who knows, they might go on to win the Cup. Here's Barnby. And Grubble has committed himself and he's way out of his goal. Here's Anderton. Grubble are trying to get back. That's number six. It's a cruel scoreline, really. But Bruce Grubble are, well, he just goes wandering out of his penalty area and he's hardly got back onto his goal line before Anderton drilled that ball past him. He might have taken a slight deflection on the way. And there it is. Tottenham will play Liverpool in the sixth round after a memorable night at the Dell and a memorable night for Ronnie Rosenthal. And he's asking the referee, can I keep the ball? Upton Park was the scene of one of the more eagerly anticipated sixth round ties, with both teams believing their name was on the cup. Spurs have always uncannily been successful when the year has ended in a one and the hosts, West Ham, had beaten Manchester United away in an earlier round, so optimism on both sides. The Hammers lineup, a mixture of youth and experience, the likes of Carrick and Cole, complemented by Pierce, Stimach and Di Canio. For Spurs, this match was being played out against a backdrop of uncertainty over the future of Sol Campbell, and there was fierce criticism of George Graham from fans concerning his style of play. It'll be West Ham United to get this FA Cup six-round tie underway. West Ham United appearing in round six for the first time since 1998, when they lost to Arsenal after a replay and a penalty shootout. Doherty fights it forward here for Spurs. And Stuart Pearce involved right at the start, arguing with the referee Andy Durso. Giving away that free kick. Freund, Everson, another great save by Shekhar Hislop, Stephen Clements really got hold of that shot as he ghosted into that inside left channel. We almost have half an hour. Stefan Freund to take the throw. Ferdinand is posted on the penalty spot. Stuart Pearce takes over and he almost nodded the ball into the path of Rebroff then. I imagine the last thing Stuart Pearce wanted when he has this ankle injury is for the rain to pelt down and make the playing surface a little bit slippier. Campbell forward, Everson forward. Ferdinand in there as well. Rebroff! That goal had been coming for the last ten minutes. It's Rebroff who scores for Tottenham after half an hour of the match. And I wonder now if this is the goal which sends Tottenham towards an FA Cup semi-final with their neighbours Arsenal. Somewhat ironically, Rebroff has scored in his last two away games at Manchester City and Charlton, and now he scores at West Ham. Here's Joe Cole. Canute, oh, that's going to be a free kick. Now, had the referee allowed the advantage then, West Ham would have scored almost certainly an equalising goal. Andy Durso very quick to blow the whistle, didn't allow for any advantage. But watch what happens once the ball has been released. I think it was Carrick who was clean through. And Carrick not too happy with that decision. Can Stuart Pearce find a way through here? That Tottenham defence has been absolutely rock solid so far. It's 
three and a half minutes to half time. Pierce. One one. An absolute bullet. The man who 24 hours ago wasn't deemed fit enough to play in this FA Cup six round tie. And his thumping free kick brings West Ham back after a very poor first half. Goal number three of the season for Stuart Pearce. As the PA announcer has suggested, the oldest player on the field has now made it 1-1. Ferdinand offside, but the referee's allowed the advantage. Here's Pierce. Actually, the second half has started very much in the same vein as the first, with Spurs just beginning to dominate midfield. And although Canuti had that really good opportunity at the start of the second half, courtesy of an error by Clements, it's been Tottenham since then, and here they have another opening, they have another goal! Redroth makes it 2-1, and just as we were talking about Tottenham's domination of this game, Redroth steals in for his second of the match. And Tottenham, for the second time in this game, have the lead. Absolutely level with the last defender. The goal comes just short of the hour mark. And once again, Redroff with a superb piece of finishing. Linking it well there with Ferdinand. The majority of fans urging West Ham forward now. Carrick. Good save by Solomon. How that ball went through such a crowded penalty area, goodness only knows. And it came off a West Ham player, Daly. West Ham have only won once in the Premiership this year, and that was at Bradford last month. And this is such an important game for them. Rebroff is on his hat trick, remember now. <laughs> Campbell's forward here for Spurs. It's a free head. Doherty's bullet header was never really defended effectively. Sullivan and his teammates celebrate. And surely now Tottenham are heading towards that semi-final clash with their old rivals, Arsenal. Doherty's header just flew off the sodden surface here. Cole seemed to get out the way of the header. But his goalkeeper couldn't get there. There's Ferdinand claiming he was fouled by Stuart Pearce. Referee waves play on his goal. Mike him through to Todorov. He's pulled one back. The substitute has pulled a goal back. Well, Todorov managed to stay on side here. What an important goal that could prove to be. Rather lucky bounce, but very, very good finish indeed. <laughs> Stefan Freud now for Spurs. Ledley King. Almost round three challenges there, Ledley King, before Stuart Pearce denied him. Joe Cole. 
ever. West Ham need his precocious talents to shine. It's now. And Clements is going to turn the ball out of play. Canute. Great save. Fantastic save by Neil Sullivan. Just when you need your keeper to pull out a big match winning save. There it is. Stuart Pearce now. We're in stoppage time at the end of the game. Canute wins the header. Di Canio. And big Sol Campbell got in the way. There's not going to be many more chances now for West Ham United. A minute and a half left, that's all. West Ham have to score. West Ham who won at Manchester United. They won at Sunderland, but they're 3-2 down here for Spurs. Joe Cole. Foul by Perry. This will just heat more and more pressure on that Tottenham goal. We've played two minutes of stoppage time. This is the final minute of the match. They have to score now. Carrick. Cole. Still Joe Cole. And it's a corner. This could be West Ham's last gasp. He's got it clear off the line, Sullivan. Oh, it was so close to an equalising goal. Headed on by Lampard. And Clements was there. And Sullivan eventually clawed it clear. Pierce. We've nearly played four minutes of stoppage time. There it is! Tottenham are on their way to the semi-finals. And in the year that ends with a one, Tottenham believe it's their lucky year. George Graham will take his Tottenham team now to an FA Cup semi-final with Arsenal. Final score from Upton Park. West Ham United 2, Tottenham Hotspur 3. Despite a hugely successful season a year earlier, Martin Yole took his Spurs side to Craven Cottage in the sixth round in 2007 under the first signs of pressure. A humiliating home thrashing against Manchester United and a feeble performance at Sheffield United had fans hoping that Spurs' traditional cup form would once again return. The host Fulham were in confident mood, fielding their strongest available side with the Italian Vincenzo Montella on the bench. Yol elected to start with Dimitar Berbatov on the bench, with Spurs still involved in the UEFA Cup, and a plethora of forwards had to be kept happy. Steve Malbronk was returning to face his old employers for the second time in a month, following a 1-1 draw in the Premier League. So we're all set then, Mark Halsey is the referee this afternoon. Just checking all is well, and about to get us underway. Certainly Martin Yole of Tottenham under a bit of pressure now, it would seem. But even after three straight defeats, he's putting on a brave face. Doesn't fear the sack, he says. Just wanting the chance to lay foundations for a dynasty at Tottenham. In the way that Arsene Wenger has at Arsenal, and of course, Sir Alec Ferguson has at Old Trafford. Tottenham in their away strip. Attacking the goal to our left. That was Zach Knight, who was skippering the full-up team. I think his partner going the wrong way there for a moment. This is Lee. Making some progress too down the top of left. Here's Mel Brock. Heavily involved in these first few minutes. Working it on well then to Keane. And it's almost in then Mel Brock. Pedro on his guard back there for Fulham. Now Brock again. Now Lee. Here's Zakora. 
Ivory Coast International. The way back by Gartner, who had been a slight doubt for this game because of an injury. Oh, what a chance here, and it's a goal from Robbie Keane. Just five minutes in. And full on there, well, completely caught cold. It was a brilliant finish. Halfway through the second half. Dawson, for the umpteenth time, heads it away. Well, certainly they have more possession in the second half. It's Coleman's team. But it's Tottenham who had the goals, and it's Roy Keane again. Of Robbie Keane, I should say. Robbie Keane. And it wasn't that dissimilar to the first one. Magnificently taken. And it might just be now the goal that takes them through to the quarterfinals. Again, it's played over the top. Again, defenders are sucked in. And it really is such an emphatic finish. What's more, the volley from Robbie Keane. Same combination. Mido with the service. And Keane with the strike. And just look what it means to the manager, Martin Yol. Dempsey. Oh, another fantastic stop by Paul Robinson to deny Morris Volts. And he's saying here with this, I am England's number one, and don't you forget it. It's a good ball as well. And only just over the top from Collins John, who went for power. Well, he timed his run to perfection. And it was a blistering finish. Maybe didn't know where Robinson was, and it only just flew over the top. Edging their way towards the quarter-finals. He knows the importance of this result today. Jim Bonda, now Zakora, striding purposefully forward. Berbatov had pulled away to his left, Dimitar Berbatov. Then ends up as well, and Keane! Back off the post! But it at the second attempt from Berbatov. And that surely has sealed it now. There is no way back from here for Fulham. He has finished them off. Well, they broke so suddenly, so effectively there with Zakora. Berbatov for the first effort that came back off the upright. But he made no mistake on the rebound. Just a slight deflection, I would have thought there off Zap Knight, but he still needed so much composure on the follower. And that Stovka couldn't readjust in time. Sweetly struck by Berbatov. Leonard, look at the room he's got here too. Still Aaron Leonard. He's got support from Chimbonda. Keane in the middle. Berbatov was lurking outside it. Half Davis. Tainio. A 
O'Keen. Is this going to be his hat trick? Still might be until the block in the end. Good stop by Las Dufka. Once again, they're opened up far too easily then, Fulham. Players dragged out of position. The keeper came to their rescue. Zakora. Berbatov darting ahead of him. Keane's in the box. Berbatov. And to Lee. Picked off to Melbrock. Robbie Keane. Jim Bonder. The Tottenham fans relishing every moment now. That was the Kuro's pass. Super one as well. Lee. Quick feed from him. Garley round the back. But it's keeper's ball. Even if it's Tottenham's cup tie, surely. see themselves as decent contenders now. Even though Chelsea is still in, and Manchester United and Arsenal at the moment, although both face tricky away games, they're to continue. Berbatov. Almost balletic with his movement sometimes. Up comes Chip Bonda. Now, Gully. Oh, great ball in for Berbatov, but it won't count. Well, it's been given. He seemed to think he was offside, I certainly thought he was. But the flag stayed down, and it's 4 0, 2 for Berbatov. And it's the right decision, too. And I must say, at first viewing, I thought he was several yards off. It was a great ball in from Keane, who did look across towards the assistant there. There was no flag, rightly so, and it was a very cute and clever finish from Berbatov. She has to put the icing on the cake now for Tottenham. As Berbatov claims goal number 14 for him. Tempers becoming frayed here right at the end. No need for Keane to get involved. Be foolish now if he lands himself in trouble. Well, he was yanking the shirt of Montella, who did lash out at him. But who's to blame there? Both parties, I'd have thought. Or rather unnecessary. The game's won, the game's over. That's the kind of character he is, Robbie Keane. Keeps going right to the finish. Oh, red card for Montella. He's off. Certainly raised his arm. A sad end to his afternoon. Only a caution for Keane. He's saying, oh, what did I do? It was an elbow in the face. But that's his desire, that's his passion, that's his commitment. Davis. And there is to be no consolation, it would seem, even. For Fulham. Outplayed, outgunned today by Martin Newell's side. You've got it right tactically, physically, mentally, in every department. They've been the better team. And Chris Coleman has his work cut out now, lifting his players again after what has been a demoralising defeat for them. So wanted to. Continue in the FA Cup, continue with their cup run full on, but it's not to be as Tottenham go marching on in some style. Two absolute walkers from Robbie Keane and two more from Berbatov, one as a substitute. So a great day for Martin Yole and for his Tottenham players celebrating here. And no wonder with the quality of that performance to end Fulham's interest in this season's FA Cup. Tottenham Hotspur, the most emphatic of winners at Craven Cottage over Fulham by four goals to nil to claim their place in the quarter-finals.